Hello everyone and welcome to this session in which we launch the 2021 Choral Courses. Uh, in this 40 minute session, uh, we're going to explore uh, the history of the Rodolphus Choral Courses, which have been going on for over 40 years and have made such an impact on the choral life in the UK and beyond. Uh, we're going to talk to the founding artistic director, Ralph Allwood. We're going to hear from Martin Ford and Ben Von Berg clark who work on the junior choral courses. We'll hear from some very special people who will be working on the courses this summer as key staff or as visiting tutors. It's an opportunity to meet our administrative team who are the point of contact for any questions about applying for a course. And there's a few minutes for questions at the end. And the whole of this film is available on YouTube after the event. And hello to those of you who are watching on YouTube. Um, we hope that this is uh, really useful in terms of opening up this extraordinary week that is life-changing for so many young people and has been uh, for the last 40 years that has set young people in a direction that has affected not just themselves but has made an impact upon so many others in the world of music. But first of all we're just going to see a couple of short films that gives a really good flavour about what happens in these weeks that take place in the summer. So here we go, a couple of short films about the courses. You don't have to be like an expert in music or anything. They just expect you to have a passion for music. Come alive, go alive, your life. It's not only um, people who look nice and like supermodels and famous people who can sing, it's regular people, everyone can sing. It really is an experience that you, you don't really get anywhere else. Nobody need be excluded because of any financial constraints because we operate a generous bursary system. But our courses are for everybody and I warmly encourage you all to take advantage of them and let those young musicians really take off and fly. So come alive. My director of music told me that I may be able to get um, a bursary to go there and in the end I got it completely paid for by the Rodolphus Foundation which was great, I was really grateful for that. Going forward it'd be great to um, do a choral scholarship at a cathedral, choir or something during university, wherever it is. I'm someone that's quite apprehensive in going to new surroundings but I was completely surprised by how lovely and how social everyone is and I still have a group of friends that I'm really friendly with and I keep in contact, I consider them my best friends. It took maybe a day or two to settle in but it was after that it was, it was amazing. You could say like hi to anyone and everyone's so friendly and they, they're all kind of respectful of the fact that everyone has something to learn from each other. So, great pleasure to introduce Ralph Forward, who, who founded these courses way back in 1980. Ralph, what do you feel when you, you see those films there? I feel sadness that we didn't do it last year and looking forward very much to doing it this year. I am probably at my happiest on a choral course because obviously I love teaching and I love choral music. And when you get 60 or 70 people absolutely devoted to that or if they're not when they arrive they are within an hour or so because it rubs off on from one to the other then one feels completely exultant and i hope that's the feeling with everybody yeah i mean when you you see that you can just see it so clear that this is a community that has so rapidly formed and it is uh, i mean it's an extraordinary thing isn't it seven days uh, roughly when on the course on a typical course do you 
feel the sense of community beginning to gel? Well, the, actually, I thought you were going to ask me a different question, so I'll ask you answer a slightly different question. First of all, your question, it gels on the first night because we all know that you've got to, and I make a real point, and when you run courses, I know you do too, that it's extremely important to look for that person gently and make sure the one that's not quite found his feet yet is all right. And that's the job of everyone there, not just the staff, um, not actually we don't have administrative staff and pastoral staff we're all administrative we're all pastoral we're all musical and we're all trained in everything and that's how it should be so we look after them but then musically it starts off being good of course because we do what i say is good music because it's music that i like and i think is good music and that's the only possible definition of good music and um and but by about day three, there's usually a moment when I think, oh, 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 oh we're starting produce, to produce really good music. The sound the choir makes is that of everyone singing in it. You know, first of all, there are a few that just put their toe in the water um, and because they're not quite sure. But then suddenly everybody gets, and then there's, it, it's catching and it's amazing. That's the thing that I always find astonishing about these courses is that for a start, they're non-auditioning. Uh, and, and secondly, you know, you're absolutely right. By about day three, there's something where you feel this is a real choir uh, that's forming. And, you know, the choirs that we run um, during the week and during the year, they, they take a long time to form, don't they? So you know, what is it, do you think, that's about, about these courses that makes that happen at lightning speed? Well, it's quite straightforward in a way because we're doing it all the time, every day. We do, and when and those who are looking after people as they go back to their houses and um, get ready for the next day are also core musicians. They all know about it, so everybody's talking about it, and um, it's it's on everyone's lips. And we learn about the music, and we do it all the time. And and when we're not when we're not actually singing, we're doing something else musical, or we might. Um, the furthest we go from singing is to play in an orchestra because everybody brings their orchestral instrument and if they haven't got an orchestral instrument we give them something to play and they do and we do some good music as well. It's a little bit like going on tour isn't it if you're lucky enough to be in a school where you can take your choir uh, away suddenly all this um, extraordinary learning happens it's because they've got nothing else yes. is it you know whereas Absolutely. The every week you're going from one thing to another and, and having to recall things and anyway look we're getting ahead of ourselves because we're naturally when, <laughs> whenever we meet we get really enthusiastic yes at, yeah. about music and about education and the amazing brilliance of that and what a great uh, joy it is to, to to be in music education but let's go back to the beginning um why do these courses exist why did why did you found them well I was myself at a state school, a wonderful state school, Tiffin School in Kingston, and I, which I know you know about. And um, there was really exceptionally good music there. And lots of people went on choral scholarships to Oxbridge because it was only Oxbridge in those days. And I thought, why can't more people have the opportunity? It was a genu genuine thought. Why can't more people have the opportunity of getting a choral scholarship to sing in these astonishing buildings, King's, John's, Christ Church? But, um, and nowadays, of course, there are lots of cathedrals and churches as well. But that combined with a kind of zeal, I suppose, to get others to, to uh, well, the zeal for that, combined with a joy for choral singing. And why can't I do choirs and things in the holidays as well as during term time? <laughs> and when you get people together who absolutely love it, and the, about on your point about auditioning, um, the wonderful thing about choral singing, it wouldn't quite work in an orchestra, but with choral singing, those who are less experienced can learn pretty quickly. And even if they don't learn to read, they don't learn to sight read so quickly, they will learn to sight read, and many say that, that their sight reading has been transformed, they pick up the music very well. And then gradually knowing the music, the reading and the musicianship um, comes along. We make sure that we teach musicianship because they paid to come and learn something about musicianship as well as have a good time. I mean, when, let's go back into the 1980s when you started this. So you were director of music at Uppingham. So the yeah. 
started there. And the first course you had, what, about 30 students or so? Yeah, 30. And that's, we're still in touch. It's amazing. I still know them. Uh, I think Roderick Williams, who's doing one of these courses, was on that one or the second one. I'm not sure. And Barry Rose came along, who was in charge of BBC broadcasts of, of Coral Even Song, and said, this is good. Would you like to do a broadcast next year? That was in 1982. So we did a broadcast in 1983. And we've been doing a broadcast more or less every year since, at least one. And, um, and then they developed. And by the third year, we thought, well, we better have two courses. And at that moment, I made a mistake. I said, let's have a senior and a junior so we get the more experienced than the less experienced. Those who came on the less experienced course said, why are we on the less experienced course? <laughs> It, it works. If you mix everybody up, you get a better result, you get better enjoyment, you get more learning. So that we only did that for one year. That was a mistake. <laughs> I, was, I was going to ask about the, these broadcasts because, I mean, that's how, how I and, and many others uh, got to know about the courses. It's just Wednesday afternoon on Radio 3. You, you're listening and you, you hear this amazing performance of the 12 or Rejoice in the Lamb or Him to Saint C. I know. You know, I know. This, this is crazy. I mean, how do you... How do you well, how do you do it? How do you get a <laughs> choir to sing this really difficult music in one week? I know. Well, you well know how you do. I mean, if you choose good music, um, it has its own energy. Obviously, you've got to do the right things. And one or two of us are experienced at that. But, um, but the main thing is that you get good music. We swear by Walton the Twelve, take yeah. him earth for cherishing of howls and all that. Um, and you ask choirs who've done them, what would you like to do again? Take him out for cherishing, for example, or or Walton the Twelve, or you know, what well, Bless Pair of Sirens is easier, but the, all these pieces and right down to Psalms. Some people come back from because we do lots of even songs. Some people come from um, from courses saying my favourite bit of the service is the Psalms, and I agree with them. It's absolutely amazing. And I, I, I certainly found that from, from my perspective, I mean, I'm, I'm in charge of a large number of state schools in, in the East Midlands. And, and the higher the bar you set, the more they rise to it, um, because it's that love of experiencing unfamiliar things and they become a part of you. And you're yeah. literally traveling yeah. Um, yeah. as well as emotionally traveling that way, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, with other enthusiasts that's the thing with other people who love it and you may only you may get a tiny proportion of them that aren't already great enthusiasts but they may not be experienced but they're enthusiasts yeah. and they very soon become it because it rubs off on them from the other they can't avoid being an enthusiast yeah i mean i often feel uh, when i'm running a course that i'm just lighting a touch paper and yes. then it's it, it's it's there and there's tremendous energy once they develop absolutely it. One thing, Simon, is that people may be a bit confused by what they're called. They started off being Uppingham Choral Courses. Then when I went to Eton, I took them with me and called them Eton Choral Courses. Then when I left Eton, Rodolphus Foundation took them over and now they're Rodolphus Choral Courses. But they're essentially the same. And if you were to summarise what the ethos of those courses are, you know, we've got lots of things going on for children over the summer um, that, that are brilliant. Um, and some involved performing in the proms, some involved doing informal music. You know, what, what would you say is the sort of USP of Rodolphus Choral Courses? Getting to love good music, being introduced to good music, which you sing to the, and to the highest possible standard. And it's amazing with singing that you can sing to the highest possible standard, even if you haven't done it before. Um, and you look at children who are choristers, very young choristers at, at cathedrals and college chapels. Amazing the music that they can do to such a high standard. If you've got the time, we've got the hours in the day. Um, we, um, first year, I did mornings singing, afternoons, our own pursuits in the sports centre, evenings. This is the very first one. Evenings, um, more singing. Nobody bothered about the sporting pursuits in, in the afternoon. They all got together and sang in consorts. So the second year in 1981, we established consort groups so that nobody will be left out and n no special activities. They can go and do them if they like. But the special activity is what we're doing. So we're going to um, come shortly to discuss what a typical day is like uh, on a choral course but of course we got we do actually have now senior and junior choral courses but of course um the age range is much 
broader, isn't it? So there's something here for age. What's the youngest? Uh, you, you eight. 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 Or even seven. Um, you have to draw the line somewhere, obviously. But the same principle pertains on junior courses. We do the very best music. That My proudest moment was standing in front of them doing the Bach Magnificat. With and eight-year-olds. Blimey. Yes. Yeah. Well, you look at cathedral choirs and things. They do them. Yeah. Okay, they rehearse a lot. Well, we rehearse a lot. And we, when you're good music, you don't mind rehearsing a lot. And we book a Baroque orchestra as well, because we just managed to find the funds to do it. And uh, they come in on the last day. And that's fascinating, because they all talk about their instruments. And uh, this year, we're doing Handel's Saul, my special version of it, which tells a bit of the story. And uh, it, it's... And so it with is... all of this, I suppose that the, the, the principle is to... Um, do repertoire and give experiences that won't happen in any school? Yeah, lots of schools aren't able to do it. Quite a lot of schools don't do it, and we need to get to them and find out mm. what which boys and girls would love to do it and get them in. It's the ones who would love to do it. It's bringing a joy that otherwise they wouldn't experience. And I think the interesting thing about the junior courses is that the age range is between 8 and 15. And it's really rare to see a choir that has that spread, that particular spread of ages. It's quite common, of course, in a, in a secondary school or a senior school to have 11 to 18 or 13 to 18. But yes. that 8 to 15 yes. thing is, is really great. And I know that, um, that everyone who goes on one of those courses has such a tremendous time. So yeah. um, we, let's, we're going to find out a little bit more about the junior courses now. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to go back to the seniors and we're going to look at the specific elements of a particular day. And this is... Martin Ford, the director of the um, junior courses, talking to fellow director Ben von Berg Clark. Hello, my name is Martin Ford, and I have the pleasure of taking responsibility for the junior choral courses within the Rodolphus Foundation. I'm currently director of music and head of performing arts at Lambrook School in Ascot. I used to run the IAPS choral courses and Berkshire Boys Choir and have years of experience working with this age group and thoroughly enjoy doing so. When the IAPS choral courses unfortunately came to an end in the year 2000, I met with Ralph Allwood and we decided that it was just such a crying shame that there were no opportunities for children to sing in a really enjoyable and expert way in their holidays and we cracked on with planning our courses and we're now into our 10th year and greatly looking forward to seeing lots and lots of children this summer. When I was conducting a choir up in Carlisle Cathedral one year on another course I came across a young tenor, a cheeky looking rapscallion by the name of Ben Clark who became more and more prominent as a young conductor. I'm delighted to say that Ben Clark, who's that cheeky looking smiley face that you can also see on the screen, Ben Clark and I have done a fair amount of work together now, mainly in uh, Shanghai, where we've been running choral courses together. And for the first time this year, Ben and I will be running the Uppingham Choral Course, whilst Ralph Allwood and I run the Wellington Choral Course. So over to you, Ben. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Martin, thank you very much for that generous introduction. It's very kind of you. And uh, I get all my cheekiness from you, of course. And uh, yes, uh, welcome everyone. It's going to be really exciting to have people back on these courses again. I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to it. And uh, what do I do? I could say first, well, as Martin said, I'm a, you know, you could say I'm an up and coming conductor, but I could say I've already up and come. But uh, I run the, uh, the musical activities in a church in South London called St John the Divine in Kennington. I also conduct the London Youth Boys Choir and I'm also the conductor of the University of Essex Choir alongside a fairly, uh, well, it was more interesting before the pandemic, a freelance career of, of singing recitals and conducting concerts and workshops all around the country, but I have quite a good connection with the Red House in Aldborough and the Benjamin Britten uh, charity work that happens over there. And uh, it all started, it did, on a course when Martin introduced me to choral music when I was about 10. So, uh, you know, I know what it feels like to go on one of these courses and to be inspired. 
Lovely. And my great inspiration for singing, and indeed the reason that I took up the career, was singing on a choral course for Ralph Allwood back in so long ago that um, Noah was around. I can't even remember when it was. But that is what is at the heart of these courses, is that people attend them and they fall in love with singing. They may arrive with an interest, but they always leave with a love. And that is something that we relish greatly. Um, the reason I'm so excited about working with Ben is that his rehearsals are just incredibly good fun. I really enjoy the way that whilst we take our music making very, very seriously, Ben and I like to introduce the element of fun into the rehearsals whenever we can. Ben, what is the repertoire that we can look forward to this summer? Uh, the course with me will be doing a fantastic piece called Hear My Words by Parry, uh, which is a collection of, of uh, different texts that builds up into a marvellous climax and a hymn at the end, Oh Praise Ye the Lord, which is quite a famous hymn. Uh, but it's done in a slightly different way than you would have heard if you'd sung that at church before. Uh, and it's incredibly rousing. And uh, when we have done it on a course a few years ago, it, 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 it's a very, very moving finale uh, to the course. And I'd say that's the biggest strength of the course, is that you're together and you form a family unit uh, throughout the week. And whilst the music uh, itself creates a very many special moments, it's doing that with people that you feel like after a few days, you've known them your whole life. You really do meet kindred spirits. Uh, so, um, so you'll really enjoy that, I'm sure. And then on the course with Ralph, we'll, uh, he's doing a, an abbreviated version of the opera or the oratorio by Handel called Saul. And he's doing some songs by Mendelssohn as well in his own uh, charismatic style. So I'm sure you'll enjoy all those. Lovely. Well, that's plenty to look forward to. Um, I should say that in the previous years, under normal circumstances, we have had a full orchestra accompanying Ralph's music at Wellington College and very much hope that that will be the case this year. But obviously, such complicated plans haven't yet been put into place for obvious reasons. So there we are. I hope that that is a concise summary of what we're aiming for with the junior choral courses. It's difficult to predict exactly what will happen when a large group of people get together for a week, but what we can absolutely promise is that you will have a lot of fun. You will do singing to a high standard, almost certainly the highest standard that you have achieved in your life so far, because we have so many people coming who share that great love of singing before they even arrive. And what we do guarantee is that if you join us after a week, You'll have had a terrifically enjoyable and educational time and you will make friends for life. And of that, we are very proud. So there are, there are two um, uh, junior choral courses over the course of the year. And not only will you improve your musical skills, but your vocabulary will d develop as well and you'll learn words such as rapscallion uh, that Martin just used there. So let's look at the senior courses. Ralph, tell us about where these courses take place. This year we have two at Eton because they were at Eton for a long time and Eton is very generous in giving us their facilities and the facilities are absolutely perfect and people tend to be fascinated to go to this place they've heard of and never been to but the chapel is fantastic there are wait for it six organs that you can select to play on and incidentally any organists that want to come are extremely welcome and uh, they can sing and play and have lessons um, so there are two there one conducted by me, the other directed by Tim Johnson, who is my successor as director of music at Tiffin, at, Tiffin, at uh, Eton. That's where you are, were. Well. Uh, now I'm getting completely confused. Um, and Tim is doing course two. Then course three is done by someone well known to you and me. That's you, um, Simon. You're running at number three in Cambridge. 
it was at St John's Cambridge, it's actually going to be relocated, but it will be in Cambridge. We know it's going to be in Cambridge and it'll have visits to all the great places that we were expecting. And then course four, shared in the direction by Anna Lapwood and myself, will be in Oxford and we'll be visiting all the great places in Christchurch and New College. If I mention two, then I leave a few outside, better not. But uh, Oxford and Cambridge are crowded with wonderful places to sing in, which are inspiring to look at, let alone sing in. So we can look forward to that. And not, not that the two of us are in any way competitive, but uh, the Cambridge course, uh, we have even song in King's College, Cambridge, and two BBC broadcasts as well. So just, just putting that out there. Um, the, uh, to tell us a little yes. bit about why, why you choose to hold these courses in places like that. And, and the impact of singing in great buildings, because we've also got Westminster Abbey there, I think St Paul's Cathedral. I mean, these amazing places. What what impact do you see that have or having on young people? Well, let's just take one of those places, shall we? At random, <laughs> <laughs> King's College, Cambridge. If you walk in through the west door of King's College Chapel in Cambridge and look up and you've never looked up before actually even if you have looked up before it always takes my breath away and when you say takes my breath away I don't mean that it fills me with breath and I just want to sing immediately it's such an astonishingly beautiful and uplifting building just to be in let alone to sing in and normally being kings they're they're quite rightly picky about who sings there they don't have visiting choirs and things except us <laughs> so if you want to sing in Kings, it's very difficult to unless you are a member of King's Choir or come on an upping on a upping come on a Rodolphus choral course. Well that's a great uh, selling point. I've just come uh, to this session having taken a Zoom rehearsal of, of my choir here in Northampton. And we were I was just asking what they're most looking forward to about next week, about going back to school. And one of them just said, We're looking forward to singing in bigger buildings. Than, than my house and my room. Yeah. When, we talk about, when we talk about big buildings, King's Cambridge, <laughs> Westminster Abbey, St Paul's, and the heritage is, is huge. Um, now, um, we're amazing. going to come later to the access for these courses because they are open to everyone. And it's not just about no auditions. It's also th uh, that we have uh, a huge amount of money for bursaries. But we're just going to park that idea for now because I think we need to go into more detail about what actually happens on a senior course on a on a typical day um because they're, they're really quite busy aren't they yes well we learned in the first course that people want to be busy if they love something they want to do it a lot of the time do we have a rest yes we pause for a bit but um people tend to be talking about music when they when they do um so we have um a total of about 20 hours at, throughout the week singing in full choir but then we have sectionals as well we have things called consort groups we split the course into six to eight groups which is which are balanced and we give them consort music and some close harmony jazz arrangements and all that sort of stuff and they each sing grace you saw one in that um, video just then in in College Hall in Eton. They each sing Grace each day in the middle of lunch. And then we also have mask classes. So visiting person, Roddy Williams is one I can remember from this year, who come along and take some of the solo singing of the individuals. Everybody has two singing lessons, at least. They bring a piece with them. Sometimes people are um, so inexperienced that they don't have a solo song to sing and we give them one and off we go most people do and most people go and find a solo song that they would like to sing beforehand and we can help them if they can't um, and then with them when they sing in these consults we have a consult group master class which sounds very grand but it's uh, everybody they're not competitive well they turn into being competitive sometimes, but there isn't a winner. We all clap everybody, you know, and um, and somebody comes along to preside over them. Um, and 
people love coming on choral courses to do it. So we get some pretty distinguished people coming to. I think we've got some members of the club this, this year, haven't we? And yeah, uh, yeah. Well, half of them, great. half of them came on a course anyway, so of course. <laughs> that's not difficult. And then this is all working towards some some major performances, isn't it? So the first ones might be a, an evening in Compline or something like that. Then one or two even songs in great buildings, uh, a formal concert of choral music and an informal concert in which yes. those concert groups appear, usually the last thing of the course. There's an orchestra um, made up of, of, of members of the course uh, and individual things that they put forward as well. There's been a course orchestra on every single course right the way from the beginning because I felt they needed something to do musical, yeah. m musically when they rest their voices. And so they're still doing music and still, and we've always had a reasonably balanced orchestra. And the other thing that's really important about that, you just mentioned about the fact that you're not singing the whole day. We do take a lot of care over the voice. And um, mm. you have Alexander Technique um, teachers for the first couple of days. Could you tell us a little bit about the, why we do that and what impact <laughs> just learning about the Alexander Technique and having some sessions has on their vocal health as the week goes on well right the way from the first course i've asked teachers to singing teachers at the very beginning to give an introduction to singing and give the basics things that they tend to say in every single singing lesson those things you can say once right at the beginning and then you can repeat them and reinforce them all of the staff are at those sessions to begin with. They're, we call them warm-ups, but warm-ups really means learning some basic things about singing together. And they do happen at the beginning of the day. So effectively, they are, they are gently warming up into singing. And then, but all of those who take core the consult groups are present at those introductions, those warm-ups, so that they can hear these points and reinforce them when when they get together with their people. We have a policy also of, of not teaching by rote, of course, um, even though it may take a bit longer doing it from the music because then it's gonna be quicker in the long run. Um, and then um, every day we have another singing teacher who does that, but we also have Alexander lessons. Well, this year we're, it's Alexander or something else. There's a um, wonderful osteopath, Ashley Stafford, is coming this year to give his amazing insights into the voice and the, what you can do to make it better and how you can adjust, the, and adjust yourself anatomically in order to do it. Um, and um, this is all basic to what we do so that hopefully we all learn, it, learn as well, we directors, We'll listen and say, oh, what a good idea. Yeah. And then we'll repeat it. And it gradually gets reinforced and processed by the end of the week. Because certainly for, for, for many students, for the vast majority of them in that week, that's, the, lo that's the, the, the largest amount of singing, concentrated singing they'll ever done in their life, including for cathedral choristers, actually, because there's more. Um, and and so I say to them also, sorry, Simon, um, I also say to them at the beginning, we don't lose our voices on this. We don't overuse our voices for the following reasons. We, you know, we don't shout and scream at each other. We take it gently. We listen to advice in our lessons. And, um, and anyone who really thinks their voice might be going, come and see us immediately and we'll show you what to do. Yeah, and it really does work, doesn't it? I mean, I think yeah. the, the other element of that is, is really important. There's there are quite a lot of the, periods of the day when they're not singing and and that's in master classes and in sessions yeah. that we also yeah. run about um uh, whatever next is a, is a session about uh university conservatoire you know uh, further opportunities for singing yes also lots of sessions about how you present yourself as a singer yes. and one of the things I, I love the most about these senior courses is two strands if you like one of learning to sing in a choir and the other of learning to sing as an individual and with that care of text and of every element of you becoming the music they they go hand in hand and then collide in a beautiful way and, and so we are actually able to to develop a choir that might sing the magnificat and Dimittis with a renewed understanding of text but also a presentation of that that is like going on stage um well i have a 
really strong conviction that if you sing well as a soloist, you can sing well in a choir. And I have the privilege of running the running the, a church choir, the only conservatoire chapel choir in the world that is at Trinity Laban, Old Royal Naval, Old Royal Naval College Chapel in Greenwich. And they have all of their vocal students are eligible to try for choral scholarships for this and extra volunteers as well. And the singing teachers all approve of this choir. I don't get any complaints. Oh, he shouldn't be singing in a choir. Of course, you know, if you can sing as a solo student, sing in a choir and vice versa. And uh, everyone should be able to do it. Well, on that note, I think we should hear from some of our key tutors and guests uh, who will be appearing with us um, this year. So we're hearing from some singing teachers. As you say, every uh, student on a course has two singing lessons and also what's called a mini masterclass, uh, which is where you're in a group of four or five for an hour and you sing to each other and, and coach each other. And then evening informal concerts and usually most people, by the time we get to the third of those sessions, uh, the majority have, have volunteered to sing. And it's a great bonding experience, isn't it? So let's hear, I think we've got a film coming up now. Um, and let's hear from these key tutors and our guests. Hello, my name is Roderick Williams. I'm an operatic baritone and recitalist and also a composer, particularly of solo song and choral music. Uh, I first uh, was introduced to Ralph Allwood and the choral courses in the early 1980s, um, when he was still a member of the staff at Uppingham School, so it was the Uppingham choral courses in those days. And I don't think it's any exaggeration to say that I'm a singer now because of those courses. Um, they introduced me to the whole idea of um, applying for a choral scholarship, which is something I, I, I probably wouldn't have done otherwise. I, I hadn't realised they existed. I didn't, re didn't realise they were a thing. Um, and it also gave me a chance to meet a great number of people, uh, singers in particular, but not just singers, organists as well, a great number of people who have become very important to me later in my own, own career. Um, I suppose you could describe it as a, a, a sort of network cloud of people that I ended up meeting uh, and I and I realized I felt comfortable as part of of that world I sort of began to realize I belonged there in a sense um, and another thing is that it also introduced me to uh, the um, particular and astonishing zeal of Ralph Allwood himself and uh, the sort of people who followed in his footsteps um, particularly as the courses um, reinvented and, 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 and became a much bigger concern the people that Ralph um, has inspired to continue his, his work uh, and uh, view uh, making excellent choral music as, as part of their mission. Um, um, I think he, he, was, he was kind of right at the figurehead of this. Um, and I found that incredibly inspiring as, as a young man. I found it was the, one of the first places that I was making uh, choral music to such a high standard. Uh, with such a range of people from across uh, across Britain, uh, particularly for me coming from a boys' school to be singing along with sopranos and altos, as well but at a particularly high standard, I think it was really a really had a really galvanising effect on me. This summer, I shall be returning myself to give a class, and uh, hopefully, again, continuing that tradition that um, Ralph inspired of bringing people who are passionate about singing. And, and I will be looking at solo singing in particular. That's my um, my joy. And uh, talking to people about the art of performance, what it means to communicate to people. It's a very good, safe space to be able to practice that. I think that's something that I hope anybody can feel um, uh, they can do, that they can offer. And, and I think it's, there's a great deal to be gained in terms of personal um, self-confidence, uh, 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 not just for singing, but for you know, public speaking, for uh, life and business in general, um, standing up in front of people and, and communicating and performing. I think it's a really useful skill to learn. So um, I very much hope that, uh, that anybody feels that these choral courses were open to them, and maybe it will open their eyes uh, in the way that it opened mine many decades ago, 
and uh, perhaps even lead them on to a career as a solo singer. Hello, I'm Anna Lapwood and I'm here to talk to you about the Rodolphus Choral Courses. I'm so excited to be co-directing one of the courses in Oxford this year with the amazing Ralph Allwood. Now I split my time normally between playing the organ and conducting, working as the Director of Music at Pembroke College in Cambridge. But it's always the highlight of my year to get to work with some young people from all across the country who just love music every summer. I first attended one of these courses myself as a very young, nervous 16-year-old who had just taken up the organ. I didn't really know anything about the choral world, I didn't know any of the music, and so I was really quite terrified when I turned up. But I quickly realised that everyone there had one crucial thing in common, and that is that everyone lived and breathed music. I was suddenly surrounded by people who all thought about music and appreciated music in exactly the same way. Now, the full choir rehearsals are always a highlight of these courses. You're getting to explore amazing music in depth in these glorious buildings with an incredible acoustic and wonderful organ, which always made me quite excited. But beyond that, there are so many other channels of music making on the courses. So you work with a consort group and you get to explore some life to music, possibly add in a dance routine as well if you're feeling particularly keen. You get to work with a singing teacher and they might help prepare you for a solo song concert. There are visiting speakers who come in and give workshops and masterclasses. But I think all of my most positive memories from those courses were actually formed in the evenings, sitting around and having a cup of tea and chatting to people who thought about music in the same way as me. So if you're a young person and you love music, you love singing, I really can't recommend it enough. Go and have a look on the Rodolphus Foundation website and I hope to see you on one of the courses this summer. My name is Tim Johnson and I'm one of the course directors. For most of the year I'm based at Eton College in Berkshire where I'm presenter and director of music. Although I'd always known about the courses by reputation, I didn't get to attend one until the summer of 2010. Since then I've had the pleasure of directing nine courses and this year I'm going to be directing course two, which is based here in Eton. I think one of the most remarkable things about the courses is that they're entirely unauditioned. Everyone is welcome, whether you're new to choral singing or a highly experienced chorister. And it's worth saying that generous bursaries are often available for those in financial need. One of my favourite moments on a course is always that first rehearsal on the first night. Everyone has spent the preceding couple of hours getting to know each other, much as they would do in any other summer course. But it's when we join together to sing that we all remember why we're really there. And for the people who have perhaps never sung in a choir of this type before, the first experience of being right in the middle of that extraordinary sound can be a very powerful one indeed. So whether you're a highly experienced cathedral chorister, or perhaps someone for whom singing is currently a fairly solitary experience, do sign up for a course and meet other people your age who share your passion. You'll get to sing great music in some extraordinary places, but just as importantly, like many people before you, you'll get to make some very long lasting friendships too. Hi there, my name is Pat Dunnicky and I'm a professional singer. I sing as part of the a cappella group, The King Singers, which has been around for decades. It's made up of six guys and in a normal year, we tour all over the world for most of the year. We give about 110 or 120 concerts. We give workshops, we make recordings, we make videos. It's a lovely, uh, fulfilling and full-time career at the heart of the British music industry. So I'm very lucky to do it. The thing I think which really gives me my kicks as a King Singer um, is just that magical, spine-tingling feeling you get standing as part of a small group of singers, um, everyone doing their bit, and the beautiful sound that gets created by that choir. Um, that's what I live for, and I think that's something that I first experienced when I came on a choral course when I was about 16. I wasn't a particularly great singer. I was enthusiastic, I liked singing, I was in my school choirs, um, but I decided to sign up and go on a choral course in Cambridge. And I had a transformational week, honestly. The people I met, the, some of the things I learnt, um, you know, starting to build my craft in terms of my consort singing abilities, which now inform my career. 
that all started that week in Cambridge. And so it's a real pleasure for me to be going back to Cambridge this summer in 2021 uh, to teach the consort workshop on that choral course. Uh, it's going to be so exciting to share some of the knowledge that I've learnt over my few years as a King Singer um, with some students uh, who I can relate to from when I was doing that just a few years ago. Um, so that's really exciting for me, but I can honestly recommend it to anybody. It can be such an incredible experience um, and it's not just because there's great singing teaching or um, amazing network of people. It's not just about the repertoire you get to sing or the transferable skills in terms of time management and teamwork that you start to learn. No, I think actually for me the main thing is it's the sense of community and friendship. I've had lifelong friends whom I met on that course in Cambridge and I think as a teenager or as a child um, getting together on that course and realising that wow there's loads of other kids who also love singing just as much as me that can be a real confidence building heartwarming experience and one that you can take on to the rest of your life. So I think for me choral courses are all about the community and the friendship. Um, but the music ain't half bad either. Hi, I'm Nikki Kennedy and I'm a singing teacher on the Rodolphus courses. I uh, have taught as a singing teacher for years and years and performed as well and have led vocal departments at schools and taught choral scholars at uh, Cambridge University and other places and now I lead a vocal department at the Jersey Academy of Music in the Channel Islands and run a small charity. Well, I've been working for the Rodolphus courses for a very great many years now, rather more than I care to remember, but they never, never, never fail to just inspire me and uh, just give me so much joy. The thing is that they are courses that just bring together this group of amazing young people who are all bound together by a shared love of singing and the staff are also bound together by that same love of singing. They're not auditioned, they're not selected and they take on challenging choral repertoire and they learn to do close harmony singing. Uh, many of them are aspiring solo singers and they have an opportunity to perform and to delve into um, the exciting world of solo song. It's great and of course that shared love of singing means that socially it just goes like a bomb every time. It's brilliant and everyone comes out with a real buzz. So what's my job on the course? Uh, as a singing teacher I'm there really to kind of look after people to make sure that vocally they are thriving throughout the course. We, we help people to keep themselves fresh, to keep themselves really singing their very very best and we give lots of advice on how to get the most out of your voice both as a choral singer and as a solo singer. We work with people in the big choir, we do warm-ups in the mornings with them. We work in small groups where people can explore performing together, maybe in a small and safer environment. And we work one-to-one -one as well and get to know your voice uh, and um, how it works. And we maybe can have a look at some things that you could think about doing differently. So it's a great opportunity for me to get to know an awful lot of fantastic young voices. Uh, what else do we do? We have just immense fun. We do concerts, we do sometimes broadcasts. There have been all kinds of things over the years. But either way, it's well worth it. And I would recommend the Rodolphus courses to absolutely anybody. I would never want to miss one. So I think we've got the picture now that these courses are really good things. Uh, let's deal with the nitty gritty about how you apply um, and how this is received by our admin team. The first thing is, as we've said before, there is no audition for this. Simply apply. Ralph, do you want to maybe just say something about um, who you're looking for to, to, to go on a course? Who's your, who's your typical student on a course? Enthusiasm. Wants to do it wants to learn that's it um and of course we have highly experienced people who've been choristers at cathedrals some of those get the most out of it of anyone funnily enough but then we get some people who've never done it before often from places which don't have much choral music and we're so lucky in this country to have so much good choral music um and um so it's for anyone that wants to do it and 
But then, of course, there are some people that don't know that they would like to do it. And somehow we have to get hold of them. And that can be through singing teachers, um, mainly teachers, of course, as well as parents and friends. And we want everybody to suggest to friends who would enjoy it that they can do it. There's a large proportion, not everybody, there's a large proportion of people who, given singing in choirs, absolutely love it. Well, without further ado, let's deal with how you apply. And we're now going to hand over to our admin team of Charlotte, Annabel and Helen. And I think they're presenting a very simple guide through video as to how to apply. Hello, my name is Charlotte Marnie and I'm the operations manager for the Rodolphus Foundation and manager of the Rodolphus Choir. I've worked with the foundation for about eight years and I'm responsible for booking the staff for choral courses and organising the content for each course. This includes visits to singing cathedrals or at university colleges and engaging professional singers to come to each course to talk to the students and give masterclasses. I also manage the Rodolphus Choir, which is a choir for singers aged 16 to 23 who come together generally in school holidays to sing directed by Ralph Allwood. All singers who attend a senior choral course are invited to audition for the choir. As a team, we work very closely to ensure that the courses provide the best possible choral education whilst also being great fun. Hello, my name is Annabel Price and I oversee the Foundation's development work, expanding partnerships with local choirs to help develop the next generation of singers and raising money in particular for the bursary fund that supports children and young people coming on a choral course. This year the fund is looking quite healthy and we plan to award around 100 singers some level of support that can range from 15% to 100% depending on their family's financial situation. We're really hoping that this bursary fund will increase year by year so that in 2023 around one third of all applicants will receive some sort of support we're very keen to open up opportunities in choral singing, and we know that summer schools are an expense not everyone can afford, but can make the most incredible difference to each person. Anyone can apply for a course, there's no audition, and anyone can apply for a bursary. There is a deadline for bursary applications of May the 21st, although non-bursary applicants can apply up to two weeks before the course starts. So if you have singers who are interested and might need a bit of financial help, then do get the application in as soon as possible. In fact, it's a good idea to apply sooner rather than later in, in any case, as we do have quotas on voice types. Despite the uncertain times, we have had a good uptake so far, perhaps because everyone is so keen to have something to look forward to. I'm Helen Bennett and I deal with all the incoming applications from singers for the junior and senior choral courses. I also handle the bursary applications to pass on to our trustees for their evaluation. I'm the first point of contact for any inquiries and I'm also the person that you call if you've got any questions or want to let us know anything before the course starts. I help Charlotte with the staff bookings and also Ian with things to do with the venues. For the foundation as a whole, I manage anything digital from social media to the website, helping with choir events and all in between. So if you have any questions or just want to have a chat, let me know. So we're coming towards the end of this presentation and I hope this gives a picture uh, for everyone about what goes on in a course, um, how they are life-changing weeks and they're for any young person with an enthusiasm about singing. It's very, very exciting that we are amassing yet more support for bursaries and it's a simple un unobtrusive process to apply. So apply, we want to see you here. We know uh, that you'll have the time of your life. All the information is on the website and please do get in touch uh, with Helen, Annabelle and Charlotte for any further information. And also spread the word. We'd love to see you uh, with us this summer. And the last thing before we sign off is we know that we have this thing called COVID that's still around at the moment and all being well in July and August, along with the rest of the performing arts, uh, we will be up and running, but we will still be planning to be having some kind of COVID security in there. Of course, as educators, we take that really seriously. Um, 
and we can't wait to get back and see so many young people making great music and sharing the joy of this with each other. So thank you for joining us. Thank you to Ralph, founder director of the courses for joining us this evening and also for setting them up in the first place. And we look forward to seeing you in the summer.